Hey guys, Bobby Eves here with the Heritage Pride Homestead and uh, today's video I want to uh, show you guys how to make a uh, seed starter for indoor seed starting or hydroponic seed starting. Um, there's a couple of commercial products out there uh, that you can purchase to start seeds uh, hydroponically or um, you know however you see fit to start them in this application. Uh, but they're pretty expensive, and so um, I'm just I'm always searching for a way to make something kind of DIY uh, so that it doesn't cost as much to do, but you still get the same effects from it. So about a month ago, I created this little guy here uh, that you can see to test out uh, hydroponic seed starting. And you can see it's it's doing really good. They're, these plants are about a month old. Um, I can tell you exactly how old they are. I started them on 729, and today is 830. So it's been uh, been just over a month. So a month and a day, right out of a month. And they're doing really good. Uh, they're a little limp right now. Um, I had my grow light. I've got it set on a. 18 hour photo cell or photo cycle right now and I had my light hooked up to this little timer and somehow the time gets off on it and it says it's 6:46 a.m. right now so it wasn't running right and the light shut off and didn't come back on and I didn't realize it and so right now they're a little limp and I just turned the just turned the light back on a few hours ago they haven't quite stood back up yet um, but they're uh, they're doing pretty good um, and I also need to uh, add some nutrient to the water as well so but anyway you can see a month uh, they're doing good for a month um, I've got 24 slots in this one for two inch net cups and um, basically I just go straight with my Grodan uh, grow cubes uh, the rock wool cubes and uh, I, I soak them in my water, get them wet, put the seeds in, and drop them right in the net cups into the uh, into the the apparatus. And then I, I bring the water level way up initially, so that it it stays on the bottom of those net cups and it stays absorbed into that rock wool. And then once the roots start to grow, then I drop the water level down and they'll just grow right down, the roots will grow right down into the water. So then you can drop your water level down a little bit. You don't have to keep it up on it so much. But yeah, it works good. Uh, I was really uh, happy with the way it turned out. Um, I've got uh, 16 tomato plants in here and four uh, artichokes and four broccoli and everything seems to be doing really well. Um, I'm getting ready to uh, sell some of these uh, for winter growers and also uh, I'm probably going to transplant a few of them into the uh, aquaponic system. But, so, since this worked out, I want to build a bigger scale one, something that will hold a lot more, um, so that I can grow way more for the upcoming changes in the uh, greenhouse. Um, so what I've done is I went and purchased a long, you see how big this thing is, thin, real flat uh, Rubbermaid tote. I paid about 12 bucks for this. You know, I think I got it at Walmart. Don't shoot me. Uh, I hate Walmart, but you know sometimes that's the only place you can find stuff. And then I went to Lowe's and I got these styrofoam panels. They're about uh, three quarters of an inch thick and uh, three quarters half inch, about three quarters of an inch thick and uh, 16 inches, well probably a little less than 16 inches wide because they're made to fit inside a um, two by four wall cavity on 16 inch centers. So I purchased these, uh, came with like six of them in a pack. So I'm going to use these as a raft and instead of using the lid, I'm going to create a raft that sets inside of the uh, Rubbermaid container to grow, uh, to start our seeds um, hydroponically. So let's get started. Alright, so what I want to do is I want to glue two of the three quarter inch panels together to make them thicker 
and that will make them more buoyant. Um, there's going to be quite a bit of weight uh, by the time you get all the, all the net cups in here and then the plants start growing. You're gonna have you're gonna have some weight. The rock wool, when it gets wet, it gets you know heavy. So uh, I'm gonna start by gluing uh, gluing uh, two of them together, and I'm gonna use liquid nails uh, for that. Just some panel and foam uh, stuff, and we'll just take. It won't take much to hold them together. Um, so we'll just put a couple little beads on here. You don't want to put too much because we don't want it to ooze out but we just want them to stick together and make it easier to work with. And when we put this other piece of foam on here, kind of push down and wiggle it around a little bit. And make sure everything lines up. All right, and we'll just set it aside and put a little bit of weight on it to uh, hold it down and uh, let it dry for uh, a few minutes. And I'm going to go ahead and I think I'm going to need two sections of this and I'm going to have to cut it to fit inside of that uh, Rubbermaid container. So um, I'm going to set this aside, let it dry, I'm going to go ahead and glue up another set and um, then I'll be back when we trace out and start cutting. Alright guys, so our panels have had time to uh, glue and set up now. So what I've done is I've just set them flat on the ground side by side and I've, I've placed our uh, Rubbermaid container um, upside down over top of it. And so what we're going to do from here is just take and trace the outside of our container with a permanent marker. Alright, now this is kind of the crappy part. Because on this container we have a lip from where we traced it right here to the inside and then we've got this little offset thing here we have to compensate for that for our rafts because you know obviously the raft would just sit on top of it as it is right now so what we need to do is kind of figure out what our lip is and it's right at about a half of an inch so um, what we're going to do um, and then we'll notch these out later but what we're going to do for now is we're going to take, and it's easier to use like something flat, a flat edge. We're going to take our ruler here and set our marker at a half inch. And then every few inches, we'll just make a tick mark all the way around it. Once you have your tick marks, you can just take your marker and connect the dots. And then you'll just continue that all the way around your foam panel. Alright, so now that I've got the line all traced out, um, I went ahead and, and measured and marked out for the uh, little offsets in the, in the Rubbermaid container as well. Um, it's time to cut it. Now, you'll want to keep, for the, this whole project, you'll want to keep a shop back handy because um, it makes a mess. It's styrofoam, you know, it's just messy. So. Uh, I've already cut the other one and uh, I cleaned up my mess so that I can show you. The glue's not completely set up yet so it's kind of a pain. If you've got more time to wait, uh, definitely recommend waiting a little while longer let that glue set up because it wants to slide around on you. The two pieces want to slide around. Um, but it's set up enough that I can get the job done. 
Um, you can use a multitude of, of items to cut this with. Um, I'm actually using a uh, wool insulation knife. It's just a serrated bread knife with a cool handle basically. But it's made for cutting rock wool. I use it to cut my rock wool up to make my grow cubes with. Um, so anyway, I'm just using that and it's working okay. It's not great, but it's alright. Uh, you could use a utility knife if you had something with a longer utility knife blade um, or anything. The best way to cut styrofoam is with a hot knife. Um, I don't own a hot knife, uh, but a hot knife is the way to go because it kind of, uh, almost like cauterizing a wound, it kind of seals the, the insulation up as we go. Um, or if you had a big uh, bandsaw, that would work good too. Uh, but I'm just using this uh, for the sake of the common man. Um, and we're just going to cut cut the lines. I'm actually cutting uh, just this side of the line uh, to give us a little bit more playroom inside of the Rubbermaid container. So that's all I'm really doing right now. Um, just cutting inside the line so that it's a little bit smaller than our diagram. And it's working out okay. So. Yeah, basically you're just going to go all the way around with the knife. And it's it's not too hard to cut. It's not easy. But um, just be patient with it. Don't try to go too fast. That. There. So now we'll clean up our foam mess and do a little test fit make sure it fits So that should work. Uh, like I said, we're gonna it's gonna float, so you know that flexibility is okay. Basically, though, you want to make sure that you have a little bit of play all the way around, um, so that these plants in the center don't push that center down, and the ones out here don't get any any water. So um, I think what I'll do is probably trim this up a little bit more. Uh, just so that it sets down in there a little bit easier and uh, yeah so to do that I'll probably just use a rasp or something alright guys so uh, I cheated a little bit um, I went ahead and and finished it finished up the raft uh, off camera um, mainly just because my battery's starting to get low uh, and there wasn't really a whole lot to see, but I'll just go over it real briefly what I did. So we finished cutting the panels out, and then um, I wanted to, at first I thought I'd leave the two separate pieces separate so that it's not one. And then I got to thinking it would be much easier to get it to float evenly if it was one raft. So I had some clear duct tape that I used. It's a real high strength clear duct tape that I used to fix the uh, greenhouse if there's any holes or anything that pop up in it. So I basically just ran, I pushed them together, ran one strip of clear duct tape down the front and then on the or on the top and bottom and joined them together. And then I took some zip ties and went around the outside perimeter of the raft and just put a few zip ties in it. Not many, just a few. Just be sure if you do that not to over tighten them because uh, it'll just pull right through the styrofoam if you do. So that just kind of gives it a little bit more rigidity um, and then I set some net cups out there and kind of got my spacing made some tick marks and then used a straight edge and made uh, my lines and everywhere where a line crossed is where I drilled a hole um, for a two inch net cup I like to use a one and seven eighths inch hole saw and then that allows the net cup to set down in there but not go all the way down in there so it sets right up to the, uh, I don't know if you'll be able to make it out in this dark dungeon, but there's a little lip right there and it lets it set right on that ridge. So you've got a little bit of space right above uh, from the top of the raft to the top of the net cut. So 
I'm using two inch net cups and um, they just slide you know they're going to slide right down in the holes just like that and make a raft system so there's a couple of options for you on seed hydroponic seed starting um, one you've got the option of the container with the lid using the lid or you can build a raft system out of some styrofoam like I said the closed cell panels would probably do better uh, you wouldn't have to glue them together you could buy a one inch closed cell four by eight foot sheet of, of closed cell foam and cut it to fit drill your holes and drop it in you wouldn't have to glue them together or anything like that now a four by eight sheet of one inch closed cell foam is going to run you about mm, 25 or 30 bucks but you could make th two or three or four of these rafts out of it so anyway just to give you some ideas on hydroponic seed starting and a little bit of a how-to on how to build a foam raft. Um, you don't have to use the foam raft in this application. You could use the same kind of guidelines and build you a foam raft for uh, a kiddie pool or for uh, an old bathtub or uh, a water trough or whatever you've got. And you know you can use this not only for seed starting but you can use it also directly in an aquaponics or hydroponics system. Alright guys, that's about it for this video. Um, like I said, I just wanted to give you guys a couple different options for hydroponic seed starting and then show you how to build a, build a raft for that. I'm excited about using it. We've got some new stuff going on with the aquaponics system. I'm going to need a lot more plants and uh, this will help me get a jump start on everything indoors uh, and then I can transplant into the aquaponic system which I enjoy doing um, more so than direct planting in the aquaponic system so anyway um, that's pretty much it for this video if you have any comments questions or suggestions pop them in the comment section below don't forget to check out the suggested video link up here and the support Heritage Pride Homestead um, another thing I haven't mentioned much uh, the uh, Heritage Pride Marketplace there's always a link in the description below to that. I haven't updated it lately, but any of the older videos that you're watching uh, for the hydroponics rail system or for the aquaponics system, uh, some of my everyday carry stuff, different things like that, you can find on our marketplace. It's through Amazon, so it's secure, um, and we just get a little bit of a kickback from that. So uh, if you're interested in any of that, check out that link. Also, uh, a lot of you guys are going to be keeping up with things that I'm doing before I even air a video on them because you are subscribed to me on or friends with me on Facebook and also on Instagram. Um, a lot of times I'll be working on things and I may record a video but during the course of recording that video I may snap some pictures and post them right away to Facebook or Instagram. So as always the links to my Facebook and Instagram are in the description below as well. So uh, hit me up on Facebook and on Instagram and uh, follow me there. Um, if you're not subscribed, check out the little icon box thingy right here. And that will take you back to our channel where you can check out our other videos and playlists. And if you like what you see, please subscribe. Until next time, get out there, shoot some guns, be safe, and most importantly, have fun. See you guys later. I'm <laughs> sorry.